We're gonna make 200 pounds of new clay. When you make the clay, it's fun. This is probably one of the messier stages. So this part's really fun, especially the beginning when we're just grabbing that slosh and throwing it in there. The tactile aspect of, of pottery and making clay, mixing clay. Like for me, that's, that's what it's about with this. It's being involved with it, feeling it. So this is called wedging. And we're essentially working the air pockets out of the clay. You don't want air pockets, these air bubbles, caught in the clay. So when you make your form, they get caught in the lip. All right, look at that, five. I do feel a really deep connection with um, the clay when I'm sitting over the wheel and working with it. I think that's uh, what kind of separates this medium from others is that it's so tactile. So you uh, can give it this touch. You know, I mean, every piece I make uh, undergoes so much manipulation. And um, another reason why I connect to the, each piece so much is because I'm touching it and feeling it so, like, a lot. Like, a, every part of my hands, my arms, like, I'm just covered in and coercing this clay to do something that hopefully that day it wants to <laughs> agree with me and do. I mean, I'm putting a lot of effort and force into centering, you know, like 10 pounds of clay. But then when I, as you saw, when I raise it and form it and then I'm finishing, I am like trying to use the feather's weight on the lip to get the, the edge um, smooth. On a personal selfish level, you know, to be doing something that I can continue trying to master from different directions. That's going to keep me engaged um, and it's going to keep me passionate forever. Uh, so that's another reason that I, um, you, it's, you can't get enough of it. Like I cannot work with this stuff enough because there's so many things to learn. We're on the uh, west coast of Cedar Creek Lake at Louise Rosenfeld's wood kiln. We fire this kiln about twice a year in the spring and in the fall. We start with a little campfire um, and build that up from twigs and dried grass. And that's when we move up to the second level of the firebox. And that's when we start feeding it with bigger logs. And we essentially keep feeding this kiln for about 26, 28 hours on average, um, sometimes more. We want a, a steady climb, about 100 to 200 degrees an hour. Uh, until we reach 22, 23, maybe even 2400 degrees. I mean, it creates an incredibly beautiful uh, varied effect. Uh, a lot of the clay that we use is high in iron, so uh, we call this a reduction firing because we're depriving the atmosphere of oxygen. For the fire to stay alive, it starts sucking oxygen from uh, the clay and from the ash and everything in the in the kiln so that process changes colors in unpredictable ways depending on where the airflow is and the ways the pots are, are stacked. So I'll always uh, make tableware and functional items because that's the history of pottery and ceramics that's the origin of of how this medium became about and why it's important to me I mean pottery represents this idea of sustenance. These pieces kind of represent a conviviality uh, to my work, which is gathering around a table with friends and family. That's a ritual that's um, sacred to me and my family and friends. My hope is with the tableware pieces I sell to complement that, to honor that ritual. Yeah.